For this unit, we started with the center of mass. And for this course, you probably just need to know about uh, how to find the center of mass location for a system with two pieces point mass. Let's say I have a 2 kilogram and a 5 kilogram. That's uh, a distance d apart. The center of mass will be closer to the heavier one. And if the mass is 2 to 5, the distance will be 5 to 2. And that means that this distance over here will be 5 out of 7 of d. So if I divide the distance d to 7 shares, 5 plus 2, 5 shares will be on this side. And uh, this side will be 2 sevenths of the total distance. Then we talked about momentum. Momentum is p, which is m times v. And velocity is a vector, so is momentum. And that means uh, for this unit, we need to pay attention to the direction. So that means uh, if a velocity going that way is a positive 2 meters per second, then we'll have to make the opposite direction velocity negative, say negative 2 meters per second. Of course, it is also OK for us to say to the right is negative. In that case, to the left will have to, have to be made positive. Opposite direction, opposite signs. And the unit for momentum is mass times velocity, so the unit is kilogram times meters per second. And it doesn't have a special name. We also talked about this thing called impulse. We use capital J for impulse. The impulse is the average force times time. And because we're multiplying, that means if you're given this force versus time graph, then the impulse will be the area of this graph. And if we're looking at a net force for the ne for the impulse produced by the net force, the impulse also equals to the change in momentum. So we may see two different kinds of force graphs, force versus position graph and the force versus time graph. For the force versus position graph, the area is the work done by this force. For force versus time graph, the area is the impulse. And if this is the net force, that means the work done by the net force, the area of the graph, would equal to the change in kinetic energy. That is the work energy theorem, the energy conservation. And if this force is the net force, that means uh, we're looking at the impulse produced by the net force. And this will be the changing momentum. So if you see a force graph, pay attention to whether it's a force versus force versus a position graph or the force versus a time graph. Of course, you should pay attention to the labels, no matter what kind of graph you're looking at. For net force versus position graph, the area will give us the change in kinetic energy. For the net force versus time graph, the area will give us the change in momentum. And if we have a two-dimensional case like this, this ball hits the wall and then bounces that way. Symmetrically, same angles, same speed. If we're looking for the impulse on the ball in this collision, then we can find the changing momentum of the ball, which means uh, for this two-dimensional case, we have to look at one direction at a time. In this particular case, it would be convenient for us to use a coordinate system that's like this. Let's say x, y, one direction, y is uh, parallel to the wall, x is the perpendicular to the wall. And that means that we have to make a parallelogram, or I mean a rectangle in this case, to find the components of the velocity so we can look at one direction at a time. Now because it's a symmetric, that means that the y direction velocity doesn't change, but the x direction velocity changes because it switches direction. So to find the change in momentum, we only need the x direction velocity. If that angle is theta, then this angle is theta. That means this component is adjacent to the angle. So it's v cosine theta, and that one is also v cosine theta. But if I make one velocity positive, I'll have to make the other one, the one in the opposite direction, negative. 
And then when we look for the change in momentum, that will be the m times delta v, and that will be m times the final velocity minus the initial velocity, the negative v cosine theta minus the positive v cosine theta, which will give us negative twice the v cosine theta. And so in terms of the magnitude of the change, it will be twice the mv cosine theta. And this will be the impulse on the ball. If we need the impulse on the wall, it will be the same amount but the opposite direction, which means the opposite sign. Another thing is that we chose this direction as positive. That means that this impulse on the ball is negative. It goes that way because the force on the ball from the wall goes that way. See, the impulse and the force, they go in the same direction. We have the conservation of momentum. The momentum is a constant if the net force on the object or the net force on the system is zero. And we use the conservation of momentum for either explosion problems, usually, okay, or for collision problems. And because the momentum, force, and velocity, they are all vectors, that means we need to pay attention to the direction. If one direction is positive, then the opposite direction has to be negative. If it is a two-dimensional problem, then we just have to look at one direction at a time, which means the moment, initial momentum's x component equals to the final momentum's x component. The initial, compo in, the initial momentum's y component would equal to the final momentum's y component. So just do the conservation of momentum one direction at a time. There's one type of uh, commonly seen explosion problem, like this one. An object starts at rest and explodes and breaks into exactly two pieces. And there's a question asking you about the kinetic energy of the two broken pieces. For example, two people with mass M1 and M2 on frictionless ice, they push on each other and then they start to move away from each other. This is like a, an explosion problem because they start out as one piece, they stand uh, still together, and then there's an energy being released when they push on each other, and both of them start moving because it's an explosion problem. So we can use the conservation of momentum because both people start at rest, so the initial momentum is zero. That means the final momentum is also zero which means that after the explosion, the two people, they must have carry away equal amount but opposite direction momentum. That's why the final momentum can be zero. Since they have equal amount of momentum, that means that when we look for the kinetic energy, we can use this. The kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Because they have the same amount of momentum, it would be convenient if we can express this equation in terms of momentum. So what we can do is uh, we can pair up the m and the v, make it m squared v squared. But then I'll have to divide by m to make the two sides equal. And now we have an equation that's uh, one half momentum squared divided by the m. So for the two people, one half is a constant. Momentum is the same for the two people. Therefore, their kinetic energy will be proportional to 1 over m, which means the kinetic energy they get, each person gets, is inversely proportional to that person's mass, which means k1 to k2 would equal to m2 to m1. For collisions, we have elastic collision and inelastic collision. By definition, elastic collision or sometimes we call it a perfectly elastic collision, it means the initial kinetic energy of the system equals to the final kinetic energy of the system. So there's no kinetic energy being lost during the collision. If it's inelastic collision, just means those two are not equal. And there is a special kind of uh, inelastic collision. That is, uh, when two objects or even more objects, more than two objects collide and they stick together after the collision. And that will be called a completely inelastic collision.
Okay, the name is not important, but it just if the two objects collide and they stick together afterwards, that means both objects move at the same velocity and in the end. And no matter which kind of collisions we have, we can always use the conservation of momentum. And again, we need to make sure that we pay attention to the direction. And uh, if it is a two-dimensional problem, we need to do x direction and the y direction separately. If we see a problem that is the, a one-dimensional elastic collision, then not only we have the conservation of momentum, we also have the kinetic energy being the same before and after, and uh, approaching speed equals to separating speed. Because this is a second-degree equation because it involves one-half mv squared, it will be easier for us to use these two to solve the problem. For example, if we have a 2 kilogram cart and a 4 kilogram cart collide elastically, the problem will have to tell us that it is an elastic collision. So we know it is elastic. So this is 2 kilogram and 4, they collide elastically. When the 2 kilogram has an initial velocity that's 5 to the right, and the 4 kilogram has the initial velocity 3 meters per second to the left, and we want to know the final velocities for the two carts. And in this case, we can use the approaching speed equals to the separating speed. The approaching speed is the relative velocity between the two, the relative speed. Okay, so it is the difference in the velocities because that's uh, relative velocity is the difference in velocities. The velocity is five and the negative three. So five minus negative three gives us eight meters per second. That's the approaching speed. That means that the separating speed is also eight meters per second. So what we can say is that if the two kilogram ends with a V1F, then the four kilogram must have a V1F plus eight. So that this one in the front has a eight more, eight meters per second more positive velocity than that one so they can separate at the end of the collision. Which means that I'm using the approaching speed equals to separating speed to reduce our unknowns from 2 to 1. Now we only have one unknown, V1F. That means we just need to write one equation to solve for our one unknown. And the one equation we use will be the momentum conservation. When you write this, just make sure you remember this, if this to the right is positive, then to the left, this velocity has to be negative 3. If the initial velocities of these two cards are 5 meters per second and 3 meters per second in the same direction, then the approaching speed, again, it is the difference in the velocities, but this time the difference will be 5 minus positive 3. So the approaching speed will be 2 meters per second, which means if that one is V1F, then the other velocity would be V1F plus 2. And then we can, again, write the momentum conservation equation to solve for our unknowns. We also have done these uh, ballistic pendulum problems. For example, we have a pendulum, say, with a block of wood with the mass big M, and this uh, block starts at rest. And this bullet with masses little m comes in at the speed of vo. The bullet hits the block and gets be embedded inside the block and moving this block up to a maximum height h. So the problem usually either gives you the initial speed and then asks you about the maximum height or gives you the height and asks you about the initial speed of the bullet. For this problem, it involves two parts. The first part is a collision problem. The bullet collides with the block, so we use the conservation of momentum. The second part is that the bullet is inside the block and together they swing up high. For the swinging part, we would use the conservation of uh, energy. For this problem, we cannot just use the conservation of momentum 
for beginning and end. We cannot use the conservation of energy from the beginning to the end either, because in this collision process, the initial and the final mechanical energy, they are not the same. Because as the bullet enters the block, it loses energy to friction, because you can imagine that there is a lot of friction in there. So the bullet loses, the bullet and block system, they lose a lot of mechanical energy to heat because of the friction. And then in this part, the net force on the system is not zero. Therefore, the momentum is not conserved in this process. That's why we must use, treat this problem as a two-part problem. Momentum conservation for the collision and the mechanical energy conservation for the swinging part.